Section 13 of Beowulf. This reading by Tad E. Beowulf by Unknown. Translated by Francis Barton Gamere. 36. I have heard that swiftly the son of Wetstan, at wish and word of his wounded king, war sick warrior, woven mail coat, battle sark bore neath the barrow's roof. Then the clansman king of conquest proud passing the seat saw store of jewels and glistening gold the ground along. By the wall were marvels and many a vessel, in the den of the dragon, the dawn flyer old, unburnished bowels of bygone men reft of richness, rusty helms of the olden age, and arm rings many wondrously woven. Such wealth of gold, booty from barrow, can burden with pride each human wit. Let him hide it who will. His glance, too, fell on a gold-wove banner, high o'er the hoard of handiwork noblest, brilliantly broidered, so bright its gleam, all the earth floor he easily saw, and viewed all the vessels. No vestige now was seen of the serpent. The sword had tamed him. Then I heard the hill of its hoard was reft, old work of giants by one alone. He burdened his bosom with beakers and plate, at his own good will, and the ensign took, brightest of beacons, the blade of his lord, its edge was iron and injured deep, one that guarded the golden hoard many a year, and its murder fire spread hot round the barrow in horror billows at midnight hour, till it met its doom, hasted the herald, the hoard so spurred him, his track to retrace, he was troubled by doubt, high-souled hero, if haply he'd find alive where he left him, the lord of wetters, weakening fast by the wall of the cave. So he carried the load, his lord and king he found all bleeding, famous chief at the lapse of life. The liegeman again plashed him with water, till point of word broke through the breast hoard. Beowulf spake, sage and sad, as he stared at the gold. For the golden treasure, to God my thanks, to the wielder of wonders with words I say, for what I behold to heaven's Lord, for the grace that I give such gifts to my folk, or ever the day of my death be run. Now I've bartered here for booty of treasure, the last of my life, so look ye well to the needs of my land. No longer I tarry. A barrow bid ye the battle feigned raise for my ashes. Twill shine by the shore of the flood, to folk of mine memorial fair, on Hrone's headland high uplifted, that ocean wanderers oft may hail, Beowulf barrow, as back from far they drive their heels o'er the darkling wave. From his neck he unclasped the collar of gold, valorous king to his vassal gave it, with bright gold helmet, breastplate and ring, to the youthful thane bade him use them in joy. Thou art end and remnant of all our race, the Wagmunding name, for word hath swept them, all my line, to the land of doom, earls in their glory, I after them go. This word was the last which the wise old man harbored in heart, ere hot death waves of baleful he chose, from his bosom fled his soul to seek the saint's reward. 37. It was heavy hap for that hero young, on his lord beloved, to look and find him lying on earth with life at end, sorrowful sight. But the slayer too, awful earth dragon, empty of breath, lay felled in fight, nor fain of its treasure could the writhing monster rule it more. For edges of iron had ended its days hard and battle sharp, hammers leaving, and that flyer afar had fallen to ground, hushed by its hurt, its hoard all near, no longer lusty aloft to whirl at midnight, making its merriment seen, proud of its prizes. Prone it sank by the handiwork of the hero king, forsooth among folk but few achieve, though sturdy and strong, as stories tell me, and never so daring indeed of valor, the perilous breath of a poison foe, to brave and to rush on the ring-board hall, whenever his watch the warden keeps, bold in the barrow, Beowulf paid the price of death for that precious hoard, and each of the foes had found the end of this fleeting life, befell ere long that the laggards in war the wood had left, toothbreakers, 
cowards, ten together, fearing before the flourish a spear in the sore distress of their sovereign lord. Now in their shame their shields they carried, armor of fight where the old man lay. And they gazed on Wheelof. Wearied he sat at his sovereign's shoulder, shieldsman good, to wake him with water. No wise it availed, though well he wished it, and world no more could he barrier life for that leader of battles, nor baffle the will of all-wielding God. Doom of the Lord was law o'er the deeds of every man as it is today. Grim was the answer, easy to get, from the youth for those that had yielded to fear. Wheelof spake, the son of Wetchstan. Mournful he looked on those men unloved. Who, sooth, will speak? can say indeed that the ruler who gave you golden rings and the harness of war in which ye stand for he at ale bench oftentimes bestowed on hall folk helm and breastplate lord to liegeman the likeliest gear which near of far he could find to give threw away and wasted these weeds of battle of men who failed when the foemen came not at all could the king of his comrades in arms venture to vaunt, though the victory wielder God gave him grace that he got revenge, soul with his sword in stress and need. To rescue his life t'was little that I could serve him in struggle, yet shift I made, hopeless it seemed, to help my kinsmen. Its strength ever waned, when with weapon I struck that fatal foe, and the fire less strongly flowed from its head. Too few the heroes in throw of contest that thronged to our king. Now gift of treasure and girded of sword, joy of the house and home delight shall fail your folk. His freehold land every clansman with your kin shall lose and leave. When lords high-born hear afar of that flight of yours, a fameless deed. Yea, dead is better for liegemen all than a life of shame. 38. That battle toil bade he at Burge to announce at the fort of the cliff where, full of sorrow, all the morning earls had sat. Daring shieldsmen in doubt of twain, would they wail as dead or welcome home their lord beloved? little kept back of the tidings new but told them all the herald that up the headland road now the willing giver to wetter folk in deathbed lies the lord of gaiots on the slaughter bed sleeps by the serpent's deed and beside him is stretched that slayer of men with knife wounds sick no sword availed on the awesome thing in any wise to work a wound there we love sitteth Wetstan's bairn by Beowulf's side, the living earl by the other dead, and heavy of heart a head watch keeps o'er friend and foe. Now our folk may look for waging of war when once unhidden to Frisian, and frank the fall of the king is spread afar. The strife began when hot on the Huggis, Heelach fell and fared with his fleet to the Frisian land, him there the Hetwaris, humbled in war, plied with such prowess their power o'erwhelming, that the bold in battle bowed beneath it and fell in fight. To his friends no wise could that earl give treasure, and ever since the Marrowing's favor has failed us wholly. Nor aught expect I of peace and faith from Swedish folk, t'was spread afar, how on Gentheo, reft at raven's wood, hath kin wrestling of hope and life, when the folk of Gaiots for the first time sought and wanton pride the warlike skilfings. Soon the sage old sire of Otir, ancient and awful, gave answering blow. The sea king he slew and his spouse redeemed, his good wife rescued, though robbed of her gold, mother of Otir and Anala. Then he followed his foes who fled before him, sore beset and stole their way, bereft of a ruler to Ravenswood. With his hosts he besieged there what swords had left, the weary and wounded. Woes he threatened the whole night through to that hard-pressed throng. Some with the morrow his sword should kill, 
Some should go to the gallows tree for rapture of ravens. But rescue came and dawn and day for those desperate men when they heard the horn of Heloch's sound, tones of his trumpet. The trusty king had followed their trail with faithful band. End of section 13.